that can create content. You can upload uh, images, you can upload videos. Uh, as soon as the uh, way it works is that everything gets stored in the uh, mobile device. And once a successful internet connection is established, uh, the post is automatically updated to your site. Um, so that's pretty much, that's, I think, just pretty cool. Uh, so uh, now that we actually know what features are currently being worked on in the app, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how the mobile apps are built. Um, so all development is in GitHub. Right? It's open source, it's licensed under GPL2. Uh, we have a separate project for each of the platforms. Um, and one, uh, we have the Gutenberg mobile project, which is for the Gutenberg mobile editor. Um, the development language for Android right now is Kotlin, and for uh, iOS is Swift, and for Gutenberg is React Native. Um, as I mentioned before, the mobile apps also have been around for a while. So uh, we do have a lot of legacy code in both the projects. So uh, I think in Java, is, uh, in Android, it's Java. Uh, there is a lot of code written still in Java, and in iOS, it's in Objective-C. And uh, now we come to the development cycle which is just a term that we use to describe the uh, process of how a product is uh, basically built. Okay, so everything happens on GitHub. Right? So each potential development starts with a GitHub issue. Right? And an issue is just, it just defines the problem statement. Right? It can be anything from finding a bug that uh, needs fixing, it can be anything from changing the font size of, uh, of the button in the app, or it can be something as complicated as uh, basically providing uh, uh, image upload support in the, uh, in the mobile apps, right? Um, so what we do is we log everything that we want to do, uh, every feature request, every bug fix that needs fixing uh, that is necessary uh, onto GitHub. Uh, we always add issues to uh, GitHub and we constantly prioritize them. Uh, what I mean by prioritizing is basically being constantly aware that what we do uh, actually can add more value to the end users, right? So once we decide that this feature or this bug fix can actually add, once we decide what it is that adds more value to the end user, we push those issues onto a development cycle, which is the sprint. Uh, the development cycle happens in a time span of two weeks. So we have two weeks to complete a release. So as a developer, what I would do is to look at the list of issues that are already prioritized in GitHub, uh, grab one of them, assign myself to it, and then I just start coding. Um, so once I decide that the development is complete, whatever I was working on is done, I submit the change in the code that I made uh, for review. Right? That is what we call a peer review or code request in this case. It is uh, basically a request to tell my colleagues that, to tell that my code is ready for their uh, review and to provide feedback. Um, as I mentioned before though, that the uh, WordPress mobile apps have been around for a long time. So uh, basically maintaining a software product for that long, it actually requires a conscious effort to build the code in a way that is maintainable, that is actually readable, and not only for us, but for anybody who's actually contributing uh, to the app, right? So uh, we others are not actually going to remember what we built three months ago, or six months ago, or a year ago. Um, so maintainability, uh, readability, uh, making sure that the code does uh, what it's supposed to do, making sure that the existing functionality is not broken, that it is properly tested. So all of these are good things, all of these are a collective responsibility of the entire team. So these are things to keep in mind while actually reviewing your code request. So that there's usually some back and forth, some discussions that take place on the code, uh, but eventually, uh, we always reach a point where we say everyone is more or less satisfied with the code submission. So that is when the code is actually released, uh, code is merged into the main uh, code base. So this process is actually repeated every two weeks. So once that issue is picked, then we grab another issue and the whole cycle starts again. So that was how we built the app, right? So once things are built, uh, we ship them and we need to provide them to our end users. And that's what we call the release cycle. Uh, so every two weeks, we have a bunch of new code uh, that includes bug fixes, new features, etc. So we pack them into a binary build uh, and submit that to Google Play beta uh, release or test like if it's iOS. Um, so this actually allows us to uh, send the app to testers so they can test the app for the next two weeks. 
Uh, at the same time, the bill that we provided to testers two weeks ago, that is basically released to the general public. Um, so the test that you, the testers actually use the database for the next two weeks and they find, uh, they test it, right? And if they find any issues in it, if they find things that they realize is not is broken or that isn't working as well as it should, they again get locked as a GitHub issue. Uh, and that would again get prioritized again and that would be included in the next development cycle. So now that we know a little bit about the apps and how it's made, uh, I wanted to take a little time to look at the people behind the app, right? So this uh, is us, this is actually the automatic mobile team. Uh, so a majority of us have worked on the WordPress mobile app at one point of time or another. But that's not actually the only product that we work on. We also work on the simple note or, or uh, commerce mobile app or more recently we actually have uh, Tumblr, for example. Um, but as you can see, there is a significant uh, number of dots on the left side of the map. Um, that's because most people are from that side and uh, we are actively actually um, trying our best to change that and maybe spread a little diversity to the rest of the world. Um, at the moment, there are about 50 of us in a mobile division. So this doesn't just include uh, developers, it includes designers, it includes the QA as well. And uh, most of us are located across many different countries. So we are always actually trying our best to include the diversity in the team, which as you can see, not only includes uh, gender diversity, but it also depends on the economic background, languages, the geographical location. Uh, but it's still a work in progress. So now that we know how the apps are built and who's actually building the app, um, I wanted to take some time to talk about how you can actually contribute to the mobile app. Right? So that's part of why we build everything as open source. Uh, so that everybody can contribute. Um, and you actually don't need to know how to go to contribute to the mobile apps. Um, there are, uh, one of the ways that you can contribute is by testing. Right? So as I previously mentioned, there is a release that happens every two weeks for testers to test the app. So with every beta release, uh, there is a call for testing that is posted on the main WordPress uh, blog on the mobile section. So this uh, call for testing actually provides a great way for you to actually test the app. All you have to do is join the Android beta program or the iOS test lab program. It's just click on that link and accept it, basically. And every time you get, uh, every time a uh, new release is actually, a uh, new beta release uh, is actually updated uh, from the developer side, or uh, you'll get a notification on your device and all you need to do is install the app and test it. So what, what all the features that are actually included in that release will always be mentioned when you, when you update the app. So it's an easy way for you to test the app. Um, if, even if you don't like testing, right, you can still uh, use the posts on the call for uh, testing uh, in the evening and in a format that is really very easy for us to incorporate in the next development cycle. Uh, but if you feel that is not something that you can do or if there is any doubt that you, uh, that before you create an issue, you have any doubt, then you can always reach us by logging into the main WordPress uh, Slack and let us know on the mobile channel. Another way to contribute is to translate, right, to help with localization. So the apps are uh, translated every two weeks, and not just the apps, but uh, all the release notes and the app store uh, descriptions, they are all translated every time there is a release. Um, translation in general is a little tricky to get, right? Because, uh, you know, some phrases that make perfect sense in English don't, or don't obviously make perfect sense in other languages, right? So if there is anything wrong that you notice in the app, the best way to fix that would be to just go and fix the translations yourself. Because uh, the translations are managed by Godpress. Um, so it's just as if you just log into God Godpress and click on the app, click on the, uh, click on the translation that you feel is not right and just change it. Um, if you also would like to add translations for languages that are not yet supported, uh, you can add that to that would be really awesome. Um, but uh, every two weeks, every time we generate a new build, uh, we will be pulling these translations from WordPress and incorporating them into the app. Um, last, uh, but not actually the least, uh, if you are a biographer or if you are interested in coding, coding in Kotlin or Java or Swift or React Native, then you know, all we have to do is just go and 
set up your system and just download the apps and start working on them. And there are a bunch of issues in GitHub. What you have to do is grab an issue, assign it to yourself, work on the issue, and submit it for review. So, and if you do have trouble picking an issue, then there are a week already auditor, we regularly audit the issues in GitHub and mark issues that we think are good first issues for people who are just starting to contribute. Right? Um, lastly, that you wouldn't be right to finish this without saying, uh, but if you are a Y developer, if you are a packet developer, a JavaScript developer, a designer, a data scientist, whatever it is that interests you, um, I definitely would encourage you to check out our jobs page um, because Automatic is a fully distributed uh, remote company. So uh, I think there are a lot of benefits from that, but that's just, I might be biased. Um, but yeah, just check out our jobs page. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening to me.